Are you sick and tired of feeling stuck? I know it's not a fun place to be because I've been there. And the good news is you don't have to stay there. There is a way out and I'm going to give it to you right now. You can get back in the driver's seat of your life, stop self-sabotage, and discover the clarity you need to move forward with ease. Does that sound like something you need? If it does, I want you to run. Don't walk, but virtually run over to karenfreeland.com forward slash six hyphen secrets. That's forward slash six hyphen secrets today and get my six secrets to get unstuck. It's totally free and it will get you one step closer to living a life you love. Welcome to Rock Your Reinvention, the show for high achieving career women who refuse to settle for mediocrity and aren't afraid to take bold action. This is a place where you can authentically show up, where every dream and goal can be validated and achieved. Hi, I'm your host, Karen Freeland, a certified life reinvention coach, speaker, and award-winning author. I'm here to give you the tips, tools, and strategies to help you shift your mindset, build your confidence, and take meaningful actions so you can rock your reinvention. Ready to go from stuck to thriving? Let's go. I have a question for all of you today. How many of you are truly ready to get unstuck? Doesn't that sound so nice? Aren't you just like, yes, get me out of this feeling of not knowing which direction to go in or know how to actually put my dreams into reality, how to make them happen? Are you ready to really uncover what it is that you want to be doing? And the reason I ask that is because instinctively, we're all going to say, yes, Karen, yes, I want to get unstuck. Yes, I want to follow my dreams. But so many of us, self-included, not anymore, but initially when I was going through my midlife crisis, trying to figure out what was next, I, I knew what was making me happy and what wasn't making me happy, but I ignored it because they were inconvenient truths. I mean, there's nothing convenient or exciting or fun about giving up a six-figure salary. I mean, I wouldn't trade it for the world now, but at the time, it just didn't seem feasible. How do you walk away from that? So what did I do? I just suppressed my dreams. I made myself stuck. I self-sabotaged because that was easier, so I thought, than making the uncomfortable changes. But what I know now being on the other side of this I could have done this so much sooner. I didn't need to feel stuck. And I was the only one who was making myself stuck. Ah, nothing like opening with some tough love. (laughs) First two minutes in and I'm already like, hi, you're the problem. I don't mean it like that. But let's be real, right? We are usually our own worst enemies. We are the ones that are holding ourselves back. That's also the best news I could ever give you. Because you can take back your power and start making those changes and get yourself unstuck. Yay, that's a good thing. You don't have to wait for anyone to change or any circumstance to change or anything else to be different. All you have to do is change yourself, change your mindset, change your approach. You do that, all that stuckness is going to go away. All those dreams are going to start to come to fruition. So what I thought might be really helpful for today's episode is if I dug into one area of my signature coaching process, the edit methodology. And what I want to focus on today is the E. If you're not familiar with the edit methodology, I do teach it in my book, Grab Life by the Dreams. But if this is the first time that you're hearing about this, I want to just give everybody a quick refresher. So those of you that are familiar with edit, just hang on for a second. The E stands for envision your goal. The D stands for document your goal. The I is invest in your goal. And the T is take action. Now, I could teach a whole masterclass or an entire day, a workshop on the edit methodology. And so we're just going to dig in today into the E, the envision phase. And that really is the biggest phase that is going to help you start to get unstuck. 
Now, one of the places I like to start with a lot of my clients is going back to your childhood. Remember those big dreams you had for your life, for yourself? What were you envisioning when you were younger? I actually wanted to be a professional dancer, and I was going to marry a New York Giants football player. Now, those of you that know me or know my husband, I did not marry a New York Giants football player. I didn't really dance professionally. I did some dance, and I do still take some classes, but you would not call me a professional dancer. But what about you? Did you have some dreams from your childhood that are still lingering? Dreams you wish you had followed? Dreams that you think about sometimes? What are they? If you're somewhere where you've got your notebook and you can write this down, I would encourage you to capture some of those dreams. What did you want to be when you grew up? Maybe you're still trying to figure that out. That's why you're here. That's okay. Many times... Our past gives us a little clue about what we might enjoy in the future. Now, let me also be clear that not every one of you wants to quit your day job and start a a business. And I understand that. And it's not for everyone. And that's okay. That's not necessarily what I'm talking about. Sometimes grab life by the dreams is a bigger concept. It's a, it's a way of living, right? It's, every aspect of your life matching up to your dreams, to how you envisioned your life being. So maybe you used to play in the orchestra and that was really fun for you and you loved having an instrument in your life. But now that you're older, kind of fell by the wayside. And now a lot of your money and your time maybe goes into children or pets or something else that takes your attention. But maybe that's exactly what you need to revisit as a hobby. Maybe that would bring you so much joy. My husband and I are actually taking a ballroom dance class. We had been taking classes um, a couple summers ago, and it was so much fun. It was like the best date night, and we just had a wonderful time reconnecting with each other, and we would get dressed up, and he would actually wear cologne, which he never does otherwise. So it was amazing. And it was a really great bonding experience for us, like kind of like rekindling our flame. And Then we kind of fell back into our normal routine, hadn't taken any ballroom classes in a while. And past weekend, I had the pleasure of watching one of my friends compete in a dance competition, ballroom style. And I was like, we have got to get back into this. I'm like, I'm just going to take some classes without you. And he was like, no way. He's like, I don't want anybody else dancing with you. I'm like, well, I'm not going to not dance because you know, you don't want me dancing with someone. He's like, no, no, I want to dance with you. Sign me up. He's like, I will go to these classes with you. I don't care. Like I'll compete if that's what you ultimately want to do. I'm like, okay. So we are going to a class on the 23rd and I can't wait. And it's going to be super fun. Now I am not going to become a professional ballroom dancer. Okay. At least I don't think that's not my goal right now. Who knows? We'll see if we're really amazing. Maybe we'll, maybe we will, but never say never. But that's not my goal, right? My goal is to just have an amazing romantic connection with my husband and also enjoy my love of movement and music and self-expression. And that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop being a coach, right? I love what I do. I love my day-to-day job. I love having a podcast. I love being on the news. All those things are going to still happen. But it's like, how do I take my life to that next level where I have this other avenue of joy? And so for me, when I envision my life, I see myself dancing. And I know that as I get older, I can't do the kind of dance that I used to do, okay? I'm not doing, I'm not rolling around on my knees doing modern and, you know, I go to classes and I try sometimes, but let me tell you what, my body hurts for days. Ballroom dancing, there's 90-year-olds out there killing it. I can do this well into my senior years. So when I'm thinking about the future, future future-proofing my life, These are the things I'm envisioning and I'm pulling them forward to figure out how I implement them now. So the first place you can always start and look again is your past. Your past often gives you clues into what you want in your future or in your present. But maybe there wasn't something from your past. Maybe, maybe you had some crazy dreams when you were a kid and you're like, yeah, I wanted, I know I wanted to be a checkout girl at the grocery store. And I did achieve that dream when I was in high school. 
That was not my long-term dream. After I was in that role, I realized this was not actually going to fit my lifestyle. And so maybe your childhood dreams were like that. And you're like, no, tried teaching, actually realized I hate kids. No, <laughs> not me. I didn't do that. But I'm saying maybe you did. You know? <laughs> and you were like, this is not for me. That's okay. Sometimes something sounds really good. And then we try it out and we realize not a fit. So maybe you're not actually looking to the past. Maybe you're looking to something. Well, when you think about what you'd like your life to look like, what comes to mind? What kind of dreams do you have? We all have them. And I'm amazed because a lot of women who sit down with me in the initial discussion, I'll ask them, so what do you want your life to look like? And I'll say, I don't know, Karen, that's the problem. I'm stuck. And about halfway through the session or once we get closer to the end, all of a sudden, it's like a light bulb goes off. They remember their dream. Like, Karen, you know what I really want to do? I've always wanted to be a doula. You know what I really want? A Christmas-themed winery. You know what I really want? Be a stay-at-home mom. I don't want to do this working thing anymore. I want to be more present for them. So many different answers, right? And I've gotten all those answers from clients. Those are actual actual examples. Uh, someone I was talking to very recently, she said, you know what I really want to do? I want to go into interior design. And I said, that's amazing. You actually know what you want to do. And then she started with the butts. But I don't know if I'd make enough money. But my kids are still in college. But, 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 but nothing. So as you are thinking about your dreams and what you want your life to look like, what butts are you throwing in the way? What excuses are you making for why this can't be for you? I want to invite you to take all those excuses off the table for a second. I want you to really brainstorm. And so again, I'd love to have you actually write down on paper, what would your dream life look like? Would you have a lot of flexibility? Would you have a lot of structure? What kind of money would you be making? Maybe it's not about the money. What kind of fulfillment would it bring you? What kind of impact would you have? Really get detailed about what this life would look like. And don't worry about right now whether it is feasible, possible, realistic or not. That's not important when you're dreaming, when we're in the envision phase. We'll have plenty of time to put everything into realistic perspective when we get to the document phase. Now, if you're not really sure, one of the things that I offer up at this phase is creating categories for your life, different goals for different areas. And this is helpful because a lot of us, when we start thinking about our dream life, a lot of times we just think about career. We don't think about our relationship. We don't necessarily think about the spirituality, and the faith aspect of our life. We might forget about our own health and wellness. What about your financial goals? So it's not just your professional goals, but we want to look at personal goals as well. And if you break them out into these categories and you list your big goals, your big dreams, your big ideas, how you envision your health and wellness, how you envision your spirituality, how you envision your career, and you map all that out, you put it all down on paper, you'll be more likely to create the dream life you really want because you're able to see everything and you don't get pigeonholed into one box and I'm only focusing on money. Well, most of us know there's a certain amount of money that makes you happy. And then after that, you're just kind of like, eh, that you couldn't pay me to do this anymore, right? Like the, no amount of money is going to bring me fulfillment at this point. So you don't want to just focus on one area. That's how we get into these lives where we're like, how did I get here? Is this really my life? There's got to be more. And it's because we got so narrowly focused on one thing we forgot that we're multidimensional people. We forgot that we have other needs in our lives besides our career. So in my signature coaching process, once I have people go through and really think through these dreams, all the different goals in all the different categories of their life, I invite them to make one full list with all their life goals on it, like all the things, right? Everything captured. 
and start prioritizing them in order of how you want to achieve them. And here's where a lot of people get off kilter because they go, well, everything's important. I want to do all these goals and dreams. Okay, are you ready for some more tough love? You can have it all. You can absolutely have it all. You cannot do it all at the same time. It's not, huh? I want to say physically possible and feasible at the same time. So uh, it is not physically possible. There's probably not enough hours in the day. There's not enough energy. You still need to sleep, right? We still have our health goals. We have to take care of ourselves. And there will always be something that you can fill the time with, right? As soon as I get done with this podcast, I could go promote my book. I could go get on somebody else's podcast. I could go write an email to my distro list. I could go out and have a networking event. I mean, there will always be something to fill the time. We've got to get laser focused on our priorities. So pick your top three to five goals that you want to go after first. And those are the ones that we move forward with into the document phase, into creating a plan around bringing those goals to fruition. But there's no point in getting to the document phase if you haven't taken the time to really envision what you want in this life. Now, for those of you that have been listening and you're struggling to write something down and you're like, Karen, I don't know. I think I forgot how to dream. I get it. I forgot a lot of my dreams. I had my first book sitting on my laptop for almost 10 years before I picked it back up again. I forgot it was even there, that it even existed, that I was even writing a book. Sometimes we just need something to jar us and then we remember that dream. So I'm just going to give you a couple of questions that you can think through that might help you start to bring some of this to the surface because it's in there. You know, you just might not consciously know you know, but your subconscious knows exactly what you're meant for and what you should be doing. All the answers are deep within you and you don't need anyone else to tell you what you should be doing. But sometimes we do need to shake them loose a little. So some questions you can ask yourself. What makes me happy? Just go back through the Rolodex of your life. What makes you happy? I had one client. She has such a love for horses and animals. And she said, whatever I'm going to do next, it has got to involve animals. I love that. And it was so freeing for her to finally put her wants and needs first and not have to do something practical, right? Like as if working with animals isn't practical. But that's what we tell ourselves, right? That's that self-talk, that inner critic, Oof, working with animals. Come on, who does that? What adult does that, right? Uh, lots of adults, lots of amazing adults. Some of them are vets. Some of them are volunteers at the ASPCA, right? There's just all kinds of ways. Some of them design animal clothes and cute leashes that we get at the boutique. There's so many different ways to bring your love and your passions forward, But you've got to know what really makes you happy. What makes you tick? Grab a journal. Write this stuff down. Who am I? Really, think about who you are. And a lot of you are going to use some of the traditional labels. You know, mom, caregiver, businesswoman, I don't know, marketer, whatever you might use your title. Who am I? Oh, I'm the VP of whatever division. Are you though? Is that really who you are in your soul? In your core, are you a carefree spirit bringing light and life to everyone around you? Are you organized, bringing structure to chaotic environments? I mean, go deeper, right? Get creative with this. Who are you really? What are your strengths? What do people know you for? What do they come to you for? What do you want people to come to you for or know you for? What are your hidden talents? Start journaling on these questions and just see what comes up. You never know where you're going to get a spark or a burst of inspiration from. And for those of you that want to do more of this journaling, Grab Life by the Dreams, the companion workbook has just come out on Amazon. So you can get the ebook, the audiobook. Obviously, if you're listening to podcasts, you probably love audiobooks. You can download that. Get yourself the companion workbook that goes with it and put all of this into practice. I can't stress enough how important it is not just to listen, 
right? Not just to be here for the podcast and I appreciate you tuning in every week. Thank you. But if you really want change, if you really want transformation, if you really, really want your dreams to come to fruition, you have to take action. You have to implement what you're hearing and what you're learning. You have to do the hard work of pulling out that notebook or the companion workbook and writing the answers. That's how you bring all of your subconscious thoughts to your consciousness. That's how the path forward gets illuminated because you start to bring all of this out of you. I love what's possible for you. It could be anything. And I want all of your wildest dreams, personally and professionally, to come true. Whatever that looks like for you, you deserve it. And here's what I know. No one is given a dream that they are not capable of bringing to fruition. You're just not. You're not. I was told internally, right? Like I knew I wanted to write a book. I was not a writer. I was not an author. I, you know, did okay in English class. I took one writing class when I was in college. And I look back at some of those papers and zhush, they were rough. Did not have an editor. Got a lot of red marks on them. But I knew I had the capability. I knew I had the smarts. I knew I had the wherewithal. I could figure it out. And there was no way that my creator was going to give me a dream that I was not capable of fulfilling. I mean, what kind of cruel joke would that be? No, of course. So if you want to fulfill your purpose, you've got to do the work. You've got to listen to the dreams and to the answers that are inside of you because it's there to guide you and bring you forward. All right, if you want to learn more about the Envision phase, like I said, it's all in Grab Life by the Dreams, which just won first place in the BookFest Spring Contest for the Motivation category. So it is officially an award-winning book, which is pretty exciting. But I'm telling you, if you even just do what we talked about today, get that down on paper, marinate on it for a few days, maybe even a few weeks, Start paying attention to maybe the signs that you're seeing that are like, hey, I wrote down this dream and there's a course next week or somebody who's coming to speak on that topic. Maybe I should be there. Or There's a new job opportunity that just popped up. Ooh, that is not a coincidence. Okay. That is a sign calling you and guiding you towards your purpose. I just want you to become more present to these things so you can see them and you can follow through on them. All right, I hope that this episode was helpful for you. I know if you put in the work that it will be. I'm excited for you. And if anyone would love to share, you can always email me, karen at karenfreeland.com, and let me know how this episode impacted you or leave a review. Let me know what changes you made as a result of this. You're why I get up and do this every day because I want other people to have the fun and the freedom and the flexibility that I have in my life. I want you to be like, oh my gosh, I got to pinch myself. Is this really my life? This is so amazing. Just like I have to do every day. It's all possible for you, but you got to do the work. And I know you will because you're a rock star. So go envision those wildest dreams and make sure you come back and let me know what actions you're going to take as a result. Until next time, ladies. Stay fabulous. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're inspired to take action by committing to one of the tips or strategies we talked about in today's episode. And if you want accountability and support, I've got your back. Join my private Facebook group, Successful Working Women Rocking Reinvention today. You'll find a community of like-minded women waiting to support you, exclusive content and helpful resources to ensure you succeed. Lastly, if you loved this episode, do me a favor and be sure to leave a review. Together, we can encourage more women to live their purpose. See you next time.